Hi everyone, my name is uh, Yuguda Mohamed. So I'll be taking a lesson on geometric optics. So what's geometric optics? Geometric optics is just the scientific study of the behavior of light. So here we are dealing with the principles behind the image forming properties of lenses mirrors and other devices that uses light as well we'll look at light as a form of energy but before that we know that light itself travels the straight line when we have a single light traveling this way we call it a ray and when we have multiple rays we call them beams so these are beams. So light is a visible form of energy which radiates outwards. Before that, again, let's look at some substance. There are some substance that allows light to pass through them. Others do not allow, they just absorb the light. Example of the material are transparent substance. So we have transparent material. So this material they allow light to pass through them. The other type of material is opaque. Opaque objects do not allow light to pass through them. Then the third one is the translucent material. So translucent material allows only partially, only partial amount of light to pass through them. The other time I talk about beam, which consists of what many rays traveling in a particular straight line. So we have, have three types of beams we have the parallel beam so this one is called the parallel beams then we have the convergent beam the convergent beam they start from a source and meet at a particular point so this is the convergent beam then we have the divergent beam So these are the three types of beams we have. Then light travels. When light hits a particular surface, it always returns back in the direction it, in which it was propagated. So we call that the principle of reversibility. So, reversibility of light. So, this is saying that if we have a plane surface and a ray of light is incident on that surface, so as it is incident, then the same, it is going to what, be reflected in the same part in which it was incident. So that's your principle of reversibility of light. And again, whenever a light is incident on a plane surface, it always reflects. The light works reflect. So we call this. Uh, in this direction, we call this the incident ray, and this is the reflected ray. So let's look at reflection on plane surface.
Under this, we are going to be talking about the laws of reflection. In the law of reflection, we have two laws. The first law, which states that the incident ray the reflected ray and the normal all lie on the same plane. So what this law is saying that if you have a plane just like a surface so if I have this surface here then on this surface, if a ray of light is incident on this surface, just like what we have here, it's going to be reflected in this direction. So, we also have a perpendicular line on this surface. So, this is a perpendicular line. So, this line is called the normal and this is the incident ray. And this is the reflected ray. So what is law is saying that the incident ray, the reflected ray, and the normal, they all lie on this particular plane. Then the second law states that the angle of incidence is equal to the angle of reflection. Now, where is the angle of incidence and where is the angle of reflection? Just like we have, this is a plane surface. This is our incident ray and this is a reflected ray. Then this is the normal. So, the angle of incidence is the angle that is formed between the incident ray and the normal, this line, normal line. So this angle here is called the angle of incidence. Then the angle formed by the reflected ray and the normal is called the angle of reflection. So what this law is saying that I is equals to R. Now, if we notice, this also forms an angle with the surface. So we call this particular angle the glancing angle. Also, this place is also called the word glancing angle. So on this plane, we have the glancing angle, we have the angle of incident, we have the angle of reflection and closing it with the angle of the, with the glancing angle. So the second law you just say that I is equal to R. Also we have um Two types of reflection, the types of reflection. The first one is the regular reflection. So when you have a plane surface, this is how regular reflection is formed. When you have an incident ray on this surface, the move, that is the angle of incident, is always equal to the angle of reflection. So when you have this incident on it, they travel at the same angle in which they are being incident on that surface. Then the second one is the diverse reflection. Now, for the regular uh, reflection, it is always produced when the surface is smooth. When you have a smooth surface, when the surface is smooth, just like a plane mirror. 
Then diffuse reflection is formed when you have a regular surface. When the surface is not regular, so when you, a ray is being incident, it moves this way. It can be reflected this way. When you have another one, it can just move this way. It's just scattered. So here, the angle of incident is not equal to the angle of reflection. So this is always formed by rough surfaces. Just like a broken mirror. It's an example of that. Then let's look at how image is being formed on a plane mirror. So we're looking at the image, that is the property of the image formed by a plane mirror. If this is a plane mirror, and uh, let's say this side, we have the reflective surface on this side, and this place is in. So this side is the reflecting surface. If I have an object that is positioned in front of the mirror, and this is a plane mirror. Now, ray of light will be transmitted from this object towards this uh, mirror. So we have, you see this is a ray of light, and we have this. Now there's, the image that is going to be formed by this object is going to be, now, this ray now, when of light, these are light rays. These are light rays that travel from that object towards the mirror. So, of course, we know that any ray of light that touches a plane surface will always be what? Will always be reflected. So, it will be reflected this way. But the image will be formed at the back of the mirror, not actually at the back of the mirror. If you look at your mirror, you are going to see that there will be a particular distance from, the surf from this, that surface of the mirror. There will be a distance that moves inward towards the mirror. We call that the back of the mirror. So the object will typically be formed this way, at this point, at the back of the mirror. So the image is drawn this way. Now, from experiment, it is observed that the distance from the object the distance of the object from the surface of the mirror, this distance, the distance of the object from the mirror is always equal to the distance of the image from that mirror. So, image distance is always equal to the object distance for a plane mirror. Now, let's look at another property of a mirror. You see that when you look, let's say you look yourself uh, in front of a plane mirror, you will see that the object is not upside down. It's always what? Straight. The object is always straight. So we call that erect. So the object is erect or let's say call it upright. So it is upright. And don't forget that it has the same distance from the mirror, the object distance is equal to the image distance. Then another property 
of this clay mirror is lateral inversion. Lateral inversion means the image produced by a plane mirror is inverted by the side, laterally inverted. That is, right side of the object will become the left side of the image. Just like this, if we have, let's say this is a plane mirror, and this side is the reflecting surface. If an object, let's, let me say red, if this object red is being shown in front of a mirror, what you'll be seeing in that mirror will be this. Now, you can see how the writing has become. So this is what we call lateral inversion. So, image formed by inclined mirrors. When two of our mirrors are being inclined, that is, if we have, let's say we have this mirror one, then it is inclined with another mirror. It can be inclined at any angle, whereby these are the reflecting surfaces. Now for any inclined mirror, the number of images that has been formed by that mirror, the number of images formed by that mirror is given as 360 over theta minus 1. So it's given by this formula, 360 minus theta over 1. So let's Look at some examples. Where theta is the angle formed between the image. So this is theta and this is theta. Theta is the angle of inclination of the two mirrors. So let's look at some example. Oh, for this example, an object is positioned between two plane mirrors inclined at 60 degrees to each other. Calculate the number of images formed. Now, the number of images formed is given by 360 over theta minus 1. So, then from the question, we have that theta is 60 degrees. So, therefore, n is equal to 360 over 60 degrees minus 1. So 360 over 60 minus 6 minus 1, which equals to 5. So for any plane mirror inclined at an angle of 60 degrees, the number of images that is formed is equal to 5. So 5 images are produced by that by the mirrors. Now, what if the angle is 90 degrees? Then N 
is equal to 360 degrees over 90 degrees. So this will give us minus 1. So this will give us 4 minus 1 equals to 3. For any image, for any uh, two mirrors just like this, incline, that is they are perpendicular to each other at 90 degrees, the number of images that will be formed is equal to 3. What if the image are parallel? Uh, what if the mirrors are parallel to each other? Then let's say we have an object O oh, placed in between them. So how many images will be formed? From our formula, we said n is equal to 360 degrees over... Now the angle formed by this is 0. Minus 1. So 360 divided by 0, that is infinity. Then minus 1, that will give us infinity. So that means there are infinite number of images to be formed whenever two mirrors are parallel to each other. So let's now study the properties of the uh, images that are being formed by two mirrors that are perpendicular to each other. Remember the side that is not shaded is the reflecting surface. So let's call this mirror 1 and this is a mirror 2. So how can we calculate the angle of reflection from of mirror 2 if we know the angle of reflection on mirror 1? Note that if this is a ray of light incident on this, is going to be reflected onto this mirror. Again, the reflected ray on mirror 2 will be this. Now, if you notice, you will see that the angle of reflection, the angle of incidence of mirror 1 is parallel to angle of incidence of mirror 2. So let's take an example. For example, let's say we have this is incidented at a glancing angle of 60 degrees. Let's say we have this is related at a glancing angle of 60 degrees. So let's use geometry to solve this. If we draw for this mirror, this is the angle of reflection. So let's call it I, I1. Okay, let's just call it I. This is the uh, incident ray. So let's draw a normal line. You will see that a perpendicular is formed here. So if we have this place to be 60 degrees, this place is going to be 30 degrees. That is 90 minus 60 will give us 30 degrees. Then from the second law of reflect, uh, second law of reflection, it states that the angle of incidence, remember this angle of incidence for mirror 1, I1, must be equal to angle of reflection of mirror 1. So this is a reflecting ray, reflected ray. So that means this place will also be equal to 30 degrees. Now, from geometry, we can see that this angle is alternate to this angle. So this place is going to also be 30 degrees. Then, if we draw the normal line to mirror 2, this is perpendicular. So this place will be 60 degrees. Then angle of incidence, this line is the incident ray on mirror 2. So the angle of incidence will be equal to the angle of reflection. So this place will be 60 degrees also. Then of course this place will be 30 degrees. So you can see 
we've gotten the angle of reflection on mirror 2. So, that means the angle of incident, if we have the angle of incident on mirror 1, angle of incident on mirror 1 is always, uh, let's say, angle of reflection for mirror 2 is equal to 90 degrees minus angle of incident on mirror 1. Now we are going to look at the deviation of light at plane surfaces. If we have a plane surface, now whenever a ray is incident on this plane surface, if we have an incident ray on this plane surface, normally the light is supposed to penetrate it and go straight this way. Normally, it's supposed to go straight. But, due to the nature of light, it is being what? It is being reflected on that surface. I and R. So, remember, this is the glancing angle there is the angle of incident, angle of reflection. Then we have a glancing angle here. So, what would be the deviation? We can see that the deviation is from year to year. D. So, this is the deviation. Normally, the rest supposed to go through the way. But due to the nature of light, it is being reflected this way. So, how can we get this uh, deviation? Now, from geometry again, this, if this is G, then you can see this angle here is equal to this angle. Whenever you have two lines crossing each other, the angle here is always equal to this angle. Call it vertical opposite angle. So if this place is G, this place is also equal to G. So that means the deviation is equal to 2. That's from here to this place. That's G plus G. So deviation is equal to 2G. So to calculate any deviation is equal to 2 times the glancing angle. So let's uh, take an example. If a ray of light strikes the surface of a plane mirror at an angle between the reflected ray and the incident ray, uh, this question correct. Okay. Let's just do this.
So to solve this problem, a ray of light meets the surface of a plane mirror at an angle of incidence of 50 degrees. What is the angle of deviation? So already I know that my deviation is 2 times the glancing angle. So I need the glancing angle first. So if I have a plane mirror, then we are told that the angle of incidence on that plane mirror is 50 degrees. So you know that this is our glancing uh, angle. So G plus 50 degrees is equal to 90 degrees. This, since this is perpendicular, that means this plus this be equal to 90 degrees. So we can get G is equal to 90 degrees minus 50 degrees, which is equal to 40 degrees. So therefore, our D is equal to 2G, which is equal to 2 times 40 degrees. That will give us 80 degrees. So the glancing angle here, uh, the deviation is 80 degrees. Now let's look at rotating mirror. For this, if we have a plain mirror, then let's see this light is incident on this mirror then it is being reflected this way so this is the normal let's say theta this way is also the let's say this i and this is r if this mirror is being rotated at a particular angle Let's say this mirror is now rotated from its initial position. This will now become this way. It is being rotated at a particular angle. And if the incident ray on it doesn't change, but we know that the reflected ray would definitely change so this is the reflected ray for the mirror then if we have the normal line so by this now we know that this will be equal to theta so as it is being Rotated this way. This is the angle of incidence. If we have theta here, we have theta here. From geometry, we'll see that the angle, the reflected, whenever a mirror is rotated, the reflected ray, the angle of reflection of that rotated mirror will be equal to, to theta where theta is the angle it is being rotated So let's look at an example.
a ray of light is directed at a plane mirror so that the angle of incident is 35 degrees. If the mirror is then rotated through an angle of 15 degrees about an axis at right angle to the plane of the mirror, find the angle between the incident ray and the reflected ray. So in this angle of rotation, So, angle of rotation of reflected ray is 2 So first we calculate the angle of rotation of the reflected ray will be equal to 2 theta That's 2 times So we are given from the question that if the mirror is turned through an angle of 15 degrees, that will be 15 degrees. So this will give us 30 degrees. Then we are given from the question that the angle of incident, a ray of light is directed at a plane mirror so that the angle of incidence is 30 degrees. So angle of incident is equal to angle of reflection, which is equal to 30 degrees degrees. So which is equals to uh, this is supposed to be thirty five degrees. Then we have to calculate find the angle of incident between the incident ray and the reflected ray. So The angle between the incident ray and the reflected ray is equal to I plus R plus the angle of rotation. So this will give us 35 degrees plus 35 degrees plus our got that as 30 degrees. So we have a 100 degrees. So reflection at a curved mirror. Now what we just did is a reflection on plane mirror. Now we can add curved mirror. A curved mirror is formed as a part when you have a sphere. So when a part of this sphere, let's say this, is being cut, you have a curved mirror. So at this time, we are going to look at the uh, terms that are used to a curved mirror. First, we have the pole. If this is a curved mirror, the pole is just the center of that mirror. This place, we call it P. That is the pole of the mirror. Then we have the principal axis. Principal axis is a line just an imaginary line that passes through the pole of the mirror. Then we have the center of curvature. Remember when I drew this, we said it is part of a sphere. 
So the center of that sphere, uh, the center of the sphere is called the center of curvature. So C is used to notate it, which is the center of curvature. Then we have the radius of curvature. Radius of curvature is the distance between the pole and the center of curvature and is given by R. So this is the radius of curvature. Then we have the principal focus. So the principal focus is just a point. Is a point F on the principal axis in which any rail that is parallel to this principal axis will always be focused on this point. So for example, when you have a curve mirror, this principal axis. So any ray that is parallel to this principal axis, let's say after reflection. So when it hits the mirror, after reflection, this line it must always fall on the principal axis. So later on we'll see how to draw the uh, the ray diagram for the curved mirror. So that's for the principal focus. Now the distance from the pole to F is always equal to the distance from F to C. So from this now we can see that F, the principal focus, okay, from the distance from the pole to the principal focus is called the focal length. So from this now we can see that since the distance from F to C is same as different distance from P to F. So therefore we can say F is equal to R over 2. So R is given as 2F. So just keep that formula in mind. So uh, in our next class we are going to see how to draw the ray diagrams for different position of objects placed in front of a curved mirror. So thank you very much. If you have any question on what we've done so far, make sure to write it in the comment box below. And to get more of these lessons, please like this video and make sure you subscribe and also hit the bell button. Thank you so much.